Winston County Coal Miner Cause they don't dig no more up in Carolina When you're a hundred feet down We're in Nashville, Tennessee at the Quonset Hut. Quonset Hut's one of the studios that um, I mean, historically has made Nashville famous with all the music that's been recorded here. Quonset Hut uh, was built in the uh, early 1950s, and you had Patsy Klein recording here, and all, I mean, every artist imaginable that came out of Nashville at that time. The Quonset Hut uh, recording studio was the very first studio to ever exist on what is now Music Row. It's basically the studio that laid the groundwork and set the precedent for everything that followed after it, and it's the reason there is a Music Row. It's one of the best sounding studios at that time in Nashville. Um, some of the best sounding records came out of here, uh, whether you talk to musicians, producers, whoever. We're working with producer Glenn Rosenstein, and we're also working with engineer Jeff Balding. Glenn put us in contact with one of our favorite new friends and human beings, Mr. Norbert Putnam. His biggest claim to fame is that he was the bass player for some guy called Elvis Presley. Maybe you've heard of him. Maybe you're familiar with him. Those of us who worked with the big guys like Presley and Roy Orbison and Ray Charles, and, and we never had uh, any ego about that because <laughs> I was feeling it was very nice to be employed and I had another job, you know. Quonset Hut was one of our favorite rooms because the engineers can make it speak and the band can make it speak. Well, I think what we're here to capture in this room is, uh, you know, hopefully the spirit of the times when this room was really cranking them out, you know, cranking out the hits, cranking out the artists. And uh, there was something special that was happening here. Currently, uh, Quonset Hut is owned by Belmont University. Uh, Belmont University has archives that have deep photographs, deep detailed documentation. So we were able to sort through an enormous amount of material that allowed us to come, if not dead on, so remarkably close to the techniques and the placement and, and, the, um, and the actual equipment that was used. We have a, a U-48 over here that Elvis not could have sung into, that Elvis did sing into, that the Jordanaires all stood around and sang into, that Roy Orbison sung into, to be in a room where you know some of the greatest American music ever recorded was, was made. And that's pretty awesome. Felt like we really needed to capture the literally the original drums that were used at Quonset Hut on some of the original songs that were done uh, at the studio. You know what is interesting with the Rogers kit that we've done is it's a bit boisterous in the room, and that's that's kind of fun. And I think I think there's a real fun perspective of putting that in the Quonset Hut room. Then you have the, the Keystone, the pre-serial number Ludwig kit, which is like, again, a very big, completely different sounding instrument, but very, very flexible and very capable. What's unique about it is, is the, the bass drum being so large and thin is, is, is interesting in this room. And then this Apollo kit, which really, it's mind boggling how good this kit sounds for what it was intended to be and how it was perceived in the marketplace. It's been the exact perfect list of instruments to capture the vision for what it is we're trying to accomplish here at Quonset Hut. Out of all the studios I could have been a part on this side of the kit for, this is probably 
the coolest thing I've ever experienced as a drummer and a musician. Forget the tune track component, just as a drummer, as a guy that plays drums and loves drums, this is probably as cool as it gets. I hope, first of all, it brings something different that they've not heard, that they don't have in their library. You'll see as you go through this library that we were very, very meticulous. I hope it brings inspiration when they hear it. I mean, they feel the essence and the spirit of what was done in these rooms. You're also gonna get usability that will allow you to use it in a modern context as well. And I hope that that comes across in their music and takes, takes things to another level. I think there's a lot of versatility in what we've done from no matter what the genre, no matter what the time period or the style that's being done, that there's something here that'll work.